Hello everyone, how's it going? Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a frappuccino crusted gecko. I know this is pretty simple, but there is two viable ways. There are other ways of doing it that are more theoretical, because we're not going to be breeding in an unethical way. However, I want to show you guys a process so that you can get used to punnett squares and breeding and all those things. Also, this is the part one of the series on how to make a blank crusted gecko. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to make different types of crusted geckos with different morphs that are morph combinations and all those things so that you can know how to do it and that you know the science behind it. Also, I want to say that I kind of inspired this idea from Crypto Crusties. They are really great. They have only a few videos, but they're really good quality videos. They have a really extensive video on how to make an exanthic lily white crusted gecko, which is a really good video. And it basically uses the same terms that I'm going to be using in here. I'm also passionate about genetics. I'm studying microbiology and biotechnology. So genetics is a part of my life and I love genetics. So I love making these videos and I don't want it to look like I copied the whole idea, but I did base some part of this video on the idea that Crypto Krusty started. So let's get into the video. When a dad and a mom have kids, they can each pass up to one copy of a gene for each one of the kids. Therefore, to each of the kids, they can either pass zero, one, or two copies of the gene. Go check out our video on Mendelian genetics to understand this video better. It will build your basic knowledge on the concepts that we're going to be going over today. And if you don't understand those concepts, you're going to have a hard time understanding this video. The cappuccino gene is an incomplete dominant gene. While one copy of the gene will make a cappuccino crested gecko, Two copies of the gene will make a super cappuccino crested gecko. The lily white gene is a recessive lethal gene, which works the same way that an incomplete dominant, however, the animals with two copies of the gene die. Therefore, one copy of the gene will make a lily white, while two copies of the gene will make a non-viable animal, meaning that it will not make it through hatching or it will die right away. Before getting into the pairings, I want to say that there are some pairings here that I'm gonna go over that are just hypothetical and I do not support. I do not support any pairing that involves breeding a cappuccino to a cappuccino or a lily white to a lily white. This is because a fourth of the kids produced from a cappuccino to cappuccino pairing will be super cappuccinos. And super cappuccinos are crusted geckos that have health issues, such as spectacle eye or reduced nostril size. And a fourth of the kids produced from a lily white to lily white pairing will be super lily whites, which will not hatch or die right after hatching. The easiest and most straightforward way of making a frappuccino crusted gecko is by breeding a cappuccino to a lily white. A 25% of the kids will have both genes, therefore it will be a frappuccino crested gecko. A 25% of the kids will be just cappuccinos, another 25% of the kids will be just lily white, and a final 25% of the kids will have none of the genes. This is probably the easiest way of doing it and the way that most people do frappuccino crusted geckos. However, there is one other ethical way of doing frappuccino crusted geckos that has the exact same percentage of 25, 25, 25, 25, frapp to cap to lily to no cap no lily. I'm going to do a final summary at the end so that you can see what is the best option for you. When you breed a frappuccino to a cappuccino crested gecko, 25% of the kids will be frappuccinos, another 25% of the kids will be cappuccinos, a 12.5 of the kids will be lily white, another 12.5 of the kids will be super cap lilies, another 12.5 of the kids will be super caps, and the final 12.5 of the kids will be no cap no lily. As I've said multiple times, since this pairing involves a cappuccino to a cappuccino, it is not an ethical pairing that I would do, and you should not do it either, because the crested geckos with two copies of the cappuccino gene are unhealthy. When you pair up a frappuccino to a lily white, you get a 25% of frappuccino crusted geckos, a 25% of lily white crusted geckos, a 25% of unborn or dead right after hatching super lily whites, a 12.5 of cappuccino crusted geckos, and a final 12.5 of no cap no lily crusted geckos. Again, this is not an ethical pairing because there is a percentage of crusted geckos that do not make it. When you pair up a frappuccino to a crusted gecko that has none of the genes, this is another ethical pairing because there are no chances of making a super cap or a super lily. Therefore, none of the kids will have the health issues that a super cap or a super lily have. When you breed a frappuccino to a frappuccino crusted gecko, one fourth of the babies is going to have two copies of the lily white gene. Therefore, it is going to die. A 25% of the kids are going to be frappuccino crusted geckos. Therefore, the percentage of frappuccino crusted geckos is not even higher than on the other pairings. A 12.5 of the kids are going to be lily whites. Another 12.5 of the kids are going to be cappuccinos. Another 12.5 of the kids are going to be super cap lilies. 
as 6.25% of the kids are going to be super caps and the final 6.25% of the kids is going to be no cap no lily. This is a theoretical pairing that I did with a super cap to a just lily. I don't think that super caps can breed because some of them don't even reach adulthood because they die since they have reduced nostril size and other health issues. Therefore, I don't think that most super caps can breed, but if you could breed a super cap to a just lily, half of the kids will be frappuccinos and another half of the kids will be just cappuccinos. If the super cappuccino parent was healthy and it could breed, I would consider this an ethical pairing since they are fraps and caps, they should not have any health issues, but maybe since one of the parents is a super cap, the kids might inherit some of these health issues but i don't think so because they are linked to having two copies of the gene not just one if we could breed a super cap to a super lily a hundred percent of the kids meaning that all of the kids would be frappuccino crested geckos since there are no super lily whites because two copies of the gene kills the crested gecko this pairing is impossible but it would make a hundred percent of the kids frappuccino crested geckos so it would be the best way of making frappuccino crested geckos if that was your goal However, since it is impossible, you're not going to be able to do so. So if you were wondering what is the best way of making a frappuccino crusted gecko, it simply depends. The only two possible ways that I think you could do it is by breeding a cappuccino to a lily white or a frappuccino to a crusted gecko with none of the genes, and both would give you the same percentages. Therefore, it is just personal preference. In my opinion, the way that I would do it is by breeding a cappuccino to a lily white and then making frappuccinos. If I really like some of those frappuccino crusted geckos that I produce, I would breed that frappuccino to a really nice crusted gecko that has none of the genes. Therefore, I would still make a 25% of the kids as frappuccino crusted geckos, and I would not be doing an unethical pairing by breeding a frappuccino to another frappuccino or a frappuccino to a cappuccino or a frappuccino to a lily white. Since these pairings involve a cap to a cap, or a lily to a lily and as we've said they can create health issues thank you so much for watching guys i hope this video was useful and if it was please comment below or subscribe or like the video and let me know what video you want to see next see you in the next video